great friend of mine, also a snappy dresser. So please give it up for the bow tie stylings of the hilarious Mr. Seth Williams. Will you just clap your hands? Thank you, thank you, thank you. I request gangster shit, and this is what I get. I'm not. Yeah, that's what I'm talking about. Let's just stop. How's everybody doing? Good. I have a really great respect for gangster music, you know? So I listen to, uh, you know, Scarface, E40, the Dixie Chicks. Are you laughing? Obviously, you've never heard Goodbye, you've never heard Goodbye Earl. Okay, because by the time you lure somebody down to the lake, uh, pretending like it's a picnic, you uh, poison his peas, wrap his ass up in a tarp, and dump him in the trunk. That's gangster. A <laughs> couple of bitches I don't want to hang out with. I'll go to your show, but we don't want to kick it. How's everybody doing? Good? Good? Everyone's excited about Obama. Everyone's glad about Obama? Yeah, Obama? Great. First black president. I've lived through a lot of first blacks. I've, uh, see, first black guy to get on the Supreme Court. First black to win a Super Bowl. First black to uh, go to trial for murder, but go to jail for kidnapping. That, sh that shit amazed me, uh, you know. Um, but there's still a first, there's still some few first blacks that, uh, you know, like uh, I'm still waiting to see. Like, I really want to know who the first black dude to have a jerry curl was. Because he started a revolution. First black dude to publicly announce that he likes crack. Because that motherfucker started a movement. I mean, it's been 25 years of crack. We've got like seven presidents, and crack is still going strong, right? I like crack, though. You know, it's just one of those kind of drugs that just doesn't sound alluring. You know, everything else seems inviting. You know, marijuana, cocaine, ecstasy, like crack. Like, what the fuck? How do you call somebody up and go, hey, let's do some crack? <laughs> fuck no. Where we get it? Oh, on a corner? Oh, no, man, fuck that. If you're still buying your drugs outside, grow the fuck up. <laughs> if you don't have a friend selling the shit to you, you're too fucking young to be doing dope. That's, how, that's just what I'm trying to say, you know. You know, I don't know, because, you know, shit makes you ugly. I like looking around the room and seeing nothing but beautiful people, you know, because ugly people bug the shit out of me. You know, they do dumb shit like get their hair done. Like, ugly is always the same. The amount of space between your eyes and their position in relationship to your nose. And there's nothing a flip or bangs can do for that. Absolutely. You know, I, I, that just seems mean, but I tease ugly people because I'm ugly on the inside. <laughs> really, and the only difference between me and them is that you can't see mine at parties, you know, at the bar or, you know, or on Facebook, you know, which it's got to suck to be ugly on Facebook, right? It's Facebook. It's like, I'm not even booking if I can't get to the face. Like, fuck, fuck no, ignore you. <laughs> If that worked, that means you're all addicted to Facebook, and so join the fucking party, right? I'm, I'm on the motherfucker all day. I'm, I'm shaking now. I can't wait to get off stage to change my status. Like Seth just did a fucking show. You know? I mean, I'm so sincere. I have a Facebook relationship. Sincerely, nothing but face. I don't even have a real phone number. I just Facebook. It's complicated. But you know, after being married, I really believe that complicated is the new happy. Sincerely, you know, because as long as you got shit to work out, you'll stay together while you work it out. As soon as you work everything out, you realize this ain't working out. And then divorce, you know, which is fine. You know, I had a great, you know, marriage was like, um, marriage is like pushing a special needs kid out of the way and taking his seat on a roller coaster. You know, the whole time you're enjoying the ride, but you just know you're fucked up somewhere. And then when it's all over, you have to explain yourself to the parents. <laughs> you know, if you're married, stay married. If you're not, don't do it. 
stay the fuck away from marriage. Cause you know, there's a lot of disease involved in marriage, you know, like kids. You know, I caught kids twice, you know, and I'm still paying for the motherfuckers. You know, James talked about a day after, I'm looking for a five year after pill. I wanna just pop the motherfucker and they just be gone. I love them, cause they here. <laughs> But if I had a choice of their existence, I would have went with the gonorrhea. Cause sometimes my kids be running around the house and I just be thinking, God damn it. Sit down, shut the fuck up. Why couldn't I have just had painful urination? You know, pop some pills, be back in the game next week. These motherfuckers gonna live longer than me. That's not fair. You catch something that outlives you. Even AIDS victims, when they die, the age goes with them. But when I die, my kids will still be here. Laughing at me like, aha, you should have never fucked mom. Lucky for me, she doesn't come to the comedy club. You know, because my child support would go up like this. I heard those jokes, fuck you. That shit is expensive, you know? I used to teach sex ed classes, and instead of showing them diseased genitals, I'd show them my check. Like after the duck, like, see this shit? That's what fucking gets. You know, I have no remorse. I have a friend who called me the other day and was like, oh, I gained 30 pounds because my birth control. I was like, stop fucking. She was like, well, I can't do that. Then shut the fuck up. Take your 30 pounds. You know, I, it, obviously, you, I just exposed my in-sympathy to, uh, you know, overweight people on birth control. I'm like, fuck it. The patch tells you you're going to gain 30 pounds. It lets you know. You know, and whoever's hitting your fat ass, fuck it. You don't really want his kid anyway, because he has no fucking sense. He's fucking you. Stay on the birth control with your ugly ass. <laughs> I told you I was ugly on the inside, which thought I was just a joke. You think I'm just up here saying shit? I mean, everything I write. You know, I, everyone, you know what? Here's the crazy part. I have a lot of black friends who are like, oh, I'm so believe in America now. Obama's president, believe in America, believe in America. I'm like, what country have you lived in? Niggas been cleaning up behind white folks for years. <laughs> What the fuck did you think was gonna happen after eight years of Bush? Another white man? No. The faith is gone. He is the Lewis Latimer to his Thomas Edison. Fix this shit. Make this light up. And once Obama cleans it up, there'll be another white man in there ready to fuck it up. Thank you, Jeeves. Appreciate your service. <laughs> Seriously, I could have won after Bush. It really wasn't that fucking hard. You know? I, I won't do what he did. I win. Not with the bow tie? Oh, because what? You write my shit? I'm just fucking with you, Langley. No, but really, you write my shit? Seriously? Anyway, all I want to just really say to everybody is just love more. You know? I mean, you know. I mean, say it again. Okay, great. I mean, you know, be ugly. Be who you are. I don't give a fuck. You know, I don't really like you that much anyway. But love more. And that's it. And I'm done. Start the band. Yeah. Seth Williams, ladies and gentlemen. Oh, yeah. Stop the band. Because I got it like that. Obama's president. I have a sense of entitlement and shit. And thank you to Obama because light-skinned niggas are back. I'm so sad. Fuck Omar Epps looking ass niggas. Fuck Maurice Chestnut. Fucking black ass when they close their eyes, you don't even know where the fuck they at. Light Bright is back. I'm so fucking happy. Ladies and gentlemen, put your hands together for Cameron Esposito.